Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and checking this video out. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a mining rig that I put together over the past few days, uh, some of the setup that I did, and just give you some insight based off my previous experience. Um, a week ago, I didn't know much about cryptocurrency or mining altogether. It all came from doing a lot of research and a lot of really good people online. So this video is more in response to that, um, kind of reflects things that I've gathered and hopefully serves as a base tool to help you build your own rig or set up a system of your own. So um, as you can tell, yes, this rig is carpeted. Um, I'll show you more later why I did that. It's to keep the noise down and also it hides away in my room that I keep it in. So it keeps the wife happy. Um, everything is serviceable. So when I walk up to this lid, no tools needed. And that, by the way, is a power button. I didn't want anything to be really flashy or obvious. So I'll show you how that works later. Um, so I'll lift this lid up, start exposing the inside, put this down over here. Now the way I set up this box, I actually use magnets on the front and back for the fans. It makes it easy to service and also um, looks nicer. I don't have to deal with screws every time. So if I lift this up, it just snaps back into place and I don't have to worry about anything falling off. Granted, it's not the most secure. I wouldn't go flying around with this on a shopping cart and expect the panels to stay on, but in a room where it doesn't move much, it's perfect. So when I drop this down, I have all of the wires coiled in the center here. And yes, I used electrical tape, but it came out pretty clean. Um, there's a single Molex that comes out as a result. Let me try to focus this. All right, so I have a single Molex that comes out when this fan is upright, it plugs in right here, and I have it set up so when I do that, it keeps everything out of the way. I'll plug this in in a moment so you can hear, hear actually hear this thing fire up. In the meantime though, I'm gonna remove this for now. Okay, front, same scenario. We're gonna check this out from over here. I have intake and exhaust fans. They are Cooler Master um, Magnaflow, I think they're called. I have a box so I can show you but they are 200 millimeter fans. They do 110 CFM at 19 decibels. So they are pretty decent flow for low noise. They also consume very little power, which is a big reason that sold me on them compared to some other options. So I'm gonna drop this down. And as you can tell, there's another harness to the left. So I'm gonna disconnect this here. So I'll pull that plug. Nice and easy. Um, okay, so I built this rig using aluminum and hardwood, uh, plywood, if you will. The aluminum helps me because I can mount the graphics cards the way they're supposed to be mounted. I don't have to use, you know, they don't just hang there or anything like that. They're actually very secure. I can grab one of these and move the entire rig because of that rail. Um, the top ones, same idea, also uses an aluminum rail. The board actually comes off. There's two screws, one on each side right here. And if I remove those, I can slide this entire board back, which allows me to service the motherboard easier in case I have some issues with something else or just want to work on the graphics cards without much of an obstacle. So put some carpet on the inside. That's not really like a design thing. I just, I think it'll help with some echo or reverberation it keeps the noise down inside from fans, stuff like that. Say Crucial M4 solid state uh, 64 gig SSD that has Windows 8.1. Normally I would use Linux uh, based builds like BAMPT or uh, Ubuntu, stuff like that, but I got Windows 8.1 for free from a training that I did. So figure why not put some use to it. Plus it has really good hash rates. So the graphics cards I did are XFX R9270Xs. I got them at Best Buy. They, mainly because they're in stock, if you look online, the markup on these things are ridiculous. A lot of people are charging $300 for a card that used to be 200 just a few months ago. Best Buy sells these at retail for 249. So if you have any discounts uh, like reward zone coupons or something like that, it's a good way to get it for a little bit less money. Either way, it's still cheaper than online. And if you have a problem, they have a lifetime warranty and you can return them right away. The other benefit is XFX typically isn't known for good hashing. They don't have the best performing graphics cards. The R9 series though is a new, I don't know if they just turned a new leaf or what, but in my experience so far, they've performed really well and above some of the other R9 270Xs I've seen. I'll have numbers below, but basically 
when I underclock them and reduce the voltage, which these are not voltage locked, I can get these to stay at about 65 to 67 degrees Celsius. Um, and that's running at an intensity of 18. I get about 430 to 440 kilohash per second. And they only consume about 140 watts. Um, total watts of this entire system at full load is 600 watts. So the power consumption is excellent. And I get about 1.7 to 1.8 mega hash. The motherboard is an ACE, or sorry, MSI uh, G45 gaming board. It uses the LGA 2000, or was it the 1150 socket? Yeah, the 1150. And that has a Celeron. You don't need a high powered processor because you don't use it. I mean, aside from booting the operating system and installing programs, it sits at 1 to 2% load the whole time. So I wanted something as power efficient and cold as possible because less temps means less heat, less fan noise, and more reliable components. You also save money on your electric bill. The RAM, I don't want crappy RAM. I didn't want anything to be unsta unstable. So I went with Corsair Vengeance. It's pretty reliable PC1600. You can buy that at any local store that sells computer parts or online. Um, the back, to get into how these graphics cards are set up, there's different ways you can do this. Some people sell extenders that look like ribbon cables and they plug right into your PCI slot, which I'll zoom in down here so you can see what I'm talking about. So they plug into your PCI slot. It's a PCI 1X in this case because bandwidth isn't an issue with cryptocurrency. I'm not using this for gaming, so I, that was fine. This particular bottle, instead of using a ribbon cable, actually uses a USB 3.0. And the base of it, let's see if I can get a better shot here. The base of it has a Molex input with a USB 3.0 in. So I mounted the board, as you can tell with the screws there. It's mounted to the wood, so it's nice and secure. USB 3 gives me a lot of room, as the cable's fairly long, so I could have made this box larger or laid it out differently for you guys that like to put stuff on racks. Um, also makes it very easy to run multiple cards without dealing with limitations of ribbons and stuff like that. The power supply, Corsair HX1050. The reason why I like this one is because it's damn near silent. Um, it has 87.5 amps on a single rail, which I like single rails more. They're just easier to configure. A decent amount of connectors. I did have to use a Molex 2 PCI uh, power you know, for the graphics card for the last card, but for the other three, they, it came with all the harnesses, which makes it nice. This little single cord here, it looks kind of tacky, but it's not a long cord, and I didn't want to deal with splicing. That's actually the power button. I mentioned that earlier, so when the lid's on, it's nice and secure, and I don't have to worry about it. That pretty much covers it. I can't think of too much else for the hardware. Um, the box is pretty stout. I've probably said um 50 times, so I apologize. But yeah, I didn't do too much with wire maintenance. It's clean enough. It doesn't hit any fans, and because of that, I can easily service it. So there's not 15,000 zip ties to undo just to get to it. The mounting of the power supply sits on a block um, that keeps it from backing out. And then, this is going to be very difficult to see. On the top left, I doubt you can catch this, but on the top left right up here, there is a tiny screw. It's a standard power supply screw because I do have an aluminum rail that goes across. It keeps the power supply from moving about, and I can even grab this whole thing and move the box, no problem. So, all in all, this whole build with materials, all the parts, everything included, was about $1,700. Um, it's nice and reliable, and I can add two more video cards. I was shocked at how low the power consumption was because I thought I'd have to add a second power supply. At the rate it's going, as long as you reduce the voltage, I have these at 1.112, I believe, and that makes a huge difference in power consumption. So this power supply could easily power a couple more um, without any problems. So I'm going to hook this all back up. I'll plug it in. You can see just how quiet the system is at full load, or not full load, but at least with all these fans going. So I'm going to pause this so I can reach around and grab it, and then I'll come back.